After a blockbuster balls-to-the-wall sophomore season, it seems a lot of people were feeling a bit underwhelmed with the third season of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I was feeling kind of the same way as I was watching it live, but when I watched it on a binge, I saw it in a totally different way and found that there was a lot to love about this season, so let's dive deep into it. We'll start with some of the major storylines, discuss each housewife and friend of, and make some predictions for the franchise moving forward. So the big event going into the season was the falling out between Lisa Barlow and Meredith Marks. After a decade of being best friends, Lisa was caught on a hot mic absolutely decimating Meredith's character. That f***ing piece of garbage whore. I f***ing hate her. She's a whore. She's f***ing half of New York. The two are not in a good place. We'd seen a bit of Meredith's reaction to it at the season 2 reunion, but apparently she'd seen it just a day or two earlier and seemed to be in a bit of shock and not sure how she wanted to handle the whole situation. When the season opens up, it's clear she's decided not to forgive Lisa and let her back in. She seems to be obsessing a little, joking with her husband Seth about eating ramen noodles as it's all they can afford, according to Lisa. Lisa herself is feeling really guilty about the whole thing. She's maintaining that it was just a venting session in the moment that she never intended to be overheard. She's feeling unsure of how to handle the situation and feeling totally isolated, turning to Heather for advice. The two first interact at Coach Shaw's Roaring Twenties themed party, and Meredith brings the ice. Lisa talks to Seth a bit, who feels she's making excuses rather than owning the behavior. This is difficult, as I'm not really sure what could be done to truly fix the relationship. Lisa did hit on every one of Meredith's triggers, attacking her family, her financial status, her character. It was an all-out terrible rant, and if I was Meredith, I think I'd have a hard time believing that Lisa didn't truly feel those things. It would be totally devastating to find out your close friend harbored this type of resentment against you. Meredith was firmly the victim until she goes to see Whitney and rumors about Lisa come up. Meredith is decently smart about this. Whitney herself admits that she's kind of a big mouth, and if you tell her something, you can ensure that it will get out to the group. She's also been anti-Lisa since episode 1, so when Meredith reveals that she's been hearing some rumors from Jen about Lisa's commitment to getting Vita Tequila on shelves, just heard that she was, you know, doing favors to help get places to pick up Vita Tequila. Whitney yes-ands her and adds a few more details to the story. And I've heard that she slept with him to sway him to invest in her businesses. The only problem is that Whitney's starting to not be so anti-Lisa. She's on her healing journey, which we'll get to, and it had this breakthrough about her views of Lisa. What's coming to mind? Um, actually, it's Lisa. <laughs> I always see her as like big, mean, nasty, but I just saw her as like a scared little girl. The inner child. Yeah. Lisa and Whitney bond further as they go down to Scottsdale early and have an intense discussion where they really open up to each other. This has made Whitney feel really guilty about talking about Lisa to Meredith, and she decides she needs to tell Lisa what Meredith has been saying. When Whitney brings this up, it starts to even out the playing field as now Lisa has been victimized too. Up until this point, it was getting a little frustrating from a viewer's perspective. On a human level, I can understand why Meredith wouldn't want anything to do with Lisa, as she'd been pretty vicious, but from a viewer's perspective, Meredith was creating a total standstill. She wouldn't hear Lisa out and allow things to keep moving, but after the rumors come out, Lisa has turned her attentions against Angie H, and now we've got a lot more going on this season. So the Meredith and Lisa feud started to take a bit of a back seat until San Diego when everyone starts randomly talking about Lisa crowdfunding for her business. It becomes clear that Meredith was trying to puppeteer others to talk about this and kind of falls flat when Lisa directly addresses it. At the reunion, it was clear that the two still aren't on good terms, but we were left with a bit of hope when they had a sweet happy birthday cheers. Moving forward, I'm curious to see where their relationship goes. With such a small core cast, it'll be important that they can remain civil, but it's seeming like they won't get back to being as close as they once were. So this takes us to the other big breakup of the season, which was between Heather and Whitney. I found this a little hard to follow as I was trying to watch week to week, but as I binged it and took copious notes, I started to get it. I think. So the two started this season as friends, soulmates, and cousins, but when Meredith starts bringing up the jazz tickets thing about Lisa, Whitney feels bad for engaging in the discussion and decides she must immediately tell Lisa what happened while absolutely hammered and in front of everyone on their first trip to San Diego. When she asks Heather to back up that she'd been hearing this too, Heather denies it, which upsets Whitney, who asserts that she was there for the conversation and Angie H was too. Heather maintains that this wasn't the case, and the fight escalates with Heather shoving Whitney and saying that she's lost her forever. You lost me forever, and that was the biggest okay. Okay. mistake in your life. They're at kind of a standstill, as Heather insists she didn't know about the jazz tickets thing, while Whitney insists she did. I kind of side with Heather in this specific aspect of the argument, as she rightfully points out that if she did indeed hear this information, she would revel in it, as she openly hates Lisa. 
She has no real incentive to lie about hearing this or not, and Angie H. backs up Heather's side of the story back in Salt Lake. This is triggering to Whitney, who's on her healing journey, as it scratches the wound of not being heard and having her feelings minimized. She had opened up to the ladies about her childhood abuse on the trip, and it feels like Heather smeared it in her face when she said Whitney made the trip all about her instead of supporting Jen. I think this was pretty cruel of Heather, as Whitney is dealing with some pretty intense stuff, and she deserves support from her friends. It was also ridiculous, in my opinion, that Heather thought that the trip could stay lighthearted and be about celebrating Jen. Like, this is real housewives, Heather. Get real. Whitney has every right to open up to the women about something she's experiencing, especially as she was going to see her half-siblings who have had the same abusive experience on this very trip. From there, things never fully mend, as I think the two have very different styles of expressing emotion. Whitney is really in a phase of laying everything out and going through the pain, whereas Heather admits on multiple occasions she'd always rather just bury things and act like nothing happened. Listen, I like suppressing things into a box, putting a tiny corner of your brain, no, you and if you forget about it, it goes away. No, you I think if Whitney would have deferred to Heather, things could have gotten back to normal, but Whitney really pushes Heather and wants to express how she's feeling, which makes Heather supremely uncomfortable. Heather talks about how if she lets out her emotions, it's all going to be released and she'd rather just keep things compact and out of mind. To me, at this point, they've grown completely emotionally incompatible. I think Whitney takes Heather's uncomfortability with expressing deep emotions as a rejection, like she thinks Heather thinks she's not worthy of understanding and feeling for, when it's really just Heather not knowing how to handle what Whitney's going through. I could be projecting because I'm much more of a Whitney where I'm like really interested in my emotional experiences and want to process them and talk them out, and I've had to learn the hard way that not everyone is like that and willing or able to sit with you through heavy emotions, and that's okay. But Whitney is understandably, though maybe not totally rationally, disappointed that Heather can't be there for her in that way. To be fair, Heather's going through a lot emotionally this season as she's writing her book exposing her Mormon upbringing and, in my opinion, being emotionally held captive by Jen. I think she just can't take anything more on. To make matters worse, Whitney has forged a bond with newly BFF single Lisa and is kind of framing it as if she felt she couldn't befriend Lisa before out of loyalty for Heather. When Whitney somewhat sticks up for Lisa posting receipts of Heather's dad's funeral on Twitter, it's the last straw for Heather. As this situation really hurt her as it drove a further wedge between her and her family, not wanting to get involved in the lion's den that is the real housewives. Heather kicks Whitney out of her house and the relationship is essentially severed. Whitney tells Jen, Angie, Kay, and Lisa that she's on a friendship break with Heather, which is news to her when she finds out, causing even more fighting and tension. They really don't leave in a good place. Apparently, they made up on Ultimate Girls Trip 3, which hopefully will be out soon, but obviously are back on bad terms as the reunion was filmed after that. Whitney had some interesting things to say about their relationship on the after show. I'll post a link to a tweet with it in the description if you want to see it. As it stands, things seem even more dire between the two of them than it is with Meredith and Lisa. There's always hope as they had a strong bond before, but I guess we'll have to stay tuned. I'd be curious to hear your projections on what you think might happen in their relationship if you have one. So let's synthesize the fallouts and talk about the changing dynamics, which was rival cliques with Meredith, Heather, and Jen on one side versus Lisa and Whitney on the other. I remember pictures leaking out towards the end of filming showing these clicks and being so shocked, but seeing it play out, I think these friendships actually make much more sense than where they initially were. Meredith and Heather have really always been friends, there was just maybe a bit of tension with Heather's hatred of Lisa, but with Meredith and Lisa falling out, it opened the door for Meredith and Heather to freely spend time together. They make a lot of sense. They're both smart and more measured than their castmates. They're both a little more low-key and not as high energy. But the big question mark is why they are so loyal to Jen, who really doesn't make much sense to be hanging out with them. We've seen that Heather always forgives Jen no matter what she says about her. Even this season when Angie K revealed that Jen initially wanted to pry into Heather's business, calling her a bitch-ass hoe in the process. And Heather just like doesn't care. Meredith was the weirder Jen ally as she spent all of last season absolutely despising her, getting mad when people would invite them both to the same events and seeming to revel in her getting arrested. It's so strange that suddenly, especially as it's becoming more and more clear that Jen is guilty of some pretty horrific crimes against the elderly, that Meredith has decided it's not her place to judge and is a loud and proud Jen supporter. She explains this away at the reunion by saying that she had heard that Jen had made an attempt on her life, and given her own family situation with her nephew, that this blanked the slate and she wanted to be in Jen's corner, but I don't know. My theory is that Jen has something on them. We see as far back as season one that Jen was recording Meredith smoking cigarettes to save for a rainy day. And they had that whole issue with Meredith hiring a private investigator who determined that Jen was likely sending threatening text messages to the cast with the smoking gun being the way Jen spells because. So my point is that Jen's shown on the show that she likely tries to get ammo on her castmates and likely threatens them. Allegedly. 
Not to mention the fact that she's nearly gotten physical with Lisa and Whitney, plus she's literally going to prison for cruelly defrauding elderly people. I just don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that people aren't just loyal to Jen because she can sometimes be a good time. Let me know if you guys agree because Meredith and Heather really sink their reputations by being so rah-rah team Jen in the face of Jen admitting to doing some pretty horrible things. I just don't believe that they would go all in for Jennifer Shaw unless they felt they had no choice. I thought maybe we'd hear a change of tune at the reunion after she pled guilty, but we really didn't, at least as I perceived it. It's just bizarre. But the other changing dynamic, a much more fun one in my opinion, was the budding friendship between Lisa Barlow and Whitney Wildrose. So, after two seasons of Whitney obsessing about Lisa Barlow, Whitney has a change of heart during a meditation session and begins to see her in a new light. They begin to bond a bit, and when Whitney falls out with Heather and Lisa had already fallen out with Meredith, the two are thrust together and begin growing their connection throughout the season. This is the alliance of my dreams, as they make so much sense as friends. Both are messy and chaotic and investigative. Plus, we saw Lisa able to sit and hold space for Whitney as she talked about her traumas, and she was really there for her when Justin lost his job. They seem to have resolved their past issues and seem to be genuine friends. But I think there's still that question mark in my mind of whether or not it will last, so it kind of keeps things dynamic. I think it's always fun for the show when friendships that seem solid change and the ones that never seem possible form. I love that intro piece they did in the first episode showing how things were in the women's casting tapes or first confessionals, only to see just how much things have changed in just three seasons. The ladies kept things fresh, and especially with the weight of Jen Shaw being released next season, I'm curious to see how these relationships evolve. But speaking of Jen, let's talk about her arrest. Or I guess the aftermath. Her legal issues. So last season we got the big stuff, but the women didn't really press her on it that much. I guess it was understandable as there was so much up in the air and they were busy focusing on Mary's church and Meredith being an FBI informant or whatever, but this season was frustratingly much of the same. Jen comes in this season continuing this narrative that she's innocent and is looking forward to her day in court, but the trial gets pushed back to after filming, killing that as a storyline. We see and hear about Jen preparing for trial, but don't get a huge insight into it. But, I mean, it's a real court case, so I can understand not showing all for a reality TV show. I found myself frustrated that we never got to see the women really question Jen's crimes in all that satisfying of a way, but I think Jen made it nearly impossible to do so. I find Jen to be incredibly manipulative and has these explosive reactions that can't be that fun to be on the other end of. She had a total meltdown over Meredith not wanting to sleep over at her house in season 1, so asking her about something as high stakes as her trial and crimes is just not going to go well. When Dana brought up knowing an informant and Jen predictably freaked out, I found Lisa and Whitney's reactions to it to be quite revealing. They explained that it's just a dance they have to do because they're essentially forced to be around Jen and being her target is just not worth it, so you've got to just shut up about her crimes. I think that's somewhat understandable. I wouldn't want to face Jen's wrath either, but what is really baffling is Heather and Meredith's support of Jen. As mentioned, I think it has to be something unseen that's keeping them on Team Jen, because as fun as Jen can maybe be at times, nothing would make me want to support someone who so cruelly and apparently knowingly took advantage of elderly people and drained their savings to the point where they could no longer afford medical care so that she could live this tacky, lavish life. It's so cruel and awful and reflects really poorly on them to be so supportive or refer to Jen as the un dog as Meredith did at the reunion. I thought after the guilty plea she may change her tune, but so far she hasn't seemed to. I'm still holding out hope that once Jen is under lock and key that maybe they'll speak a little more freely and will reveal if Jen was holding them emotionally hostage in some way, because right now it's just not making sense. Okay, that was a lot, so let's move on to one of the sillier storylines, the Finsta. So once Jen's trial gets pushed back, she has more energy to focus on other issues and suddenly becomes obsessed with the troll Instagram account that's been coming after the ladies, Shaw Exposed. Despite the name, the main target of the account was actually Lisa Barlow, who did some sleuthing and found out that the account was run by one Chris Harrington, husband of friend of and former Barlow BFF, Angie Harrington. Apparently Jen had called Angie H and confronted her about it and she lied about the whole thing only for Chris to call her back and admit he was indeed responsible. This predictably triggers Jen who, despite the content of the account mostly attacking Lisa, takes it as him going after not just her but her family as the account is Shaw Exposed. She really latches on to this. You used Shaw Exposed. You didn't say Jen Exposed. You didn't say Jen Shaw Exposed. So you just humiliated and disrespected my entire family. Despite the looming trial, this has become the biggest deal in Jen's life, so when Angie H shows up at choir rehearsal, she goes insane, getting mad about Heather not warning her that Angie 
Angie H. will be there. Angie H. denies any involvement in the account, which nobody believes. Chris, on the other hand, is very open and apologetic about what he's done. He tells Meredith about it, putting her in the impossible position of having to admonish him a little, while also kind of supporting it because it was spreading anti-Barlow sentiment. Yes, I do think it's, it's, you know, not great that you made this account and whatever else, but I have been sent certain things that tells me that Lisa has been doing the same thing. So at the end of the day, forget it. This kind of fizzles a little as Angie H isn't on the cast trip to San Diego, but Chris, Angie, Coach Shaw, and Jen all discuss it and make up at the finale party, with Jen seeming to get over it kind of quickly, only for us to get the missing puzzle piece at the reunion that the Harringtons had donated to Jen's legal fund, perhaps explaining Jen's sudden change of heart. I thought this storyline was kind of fun. It brought Instagram troll accounts to light on the show, a little bit of fourth wall breaking. It was also kind of insane that a husband of a not very heavily featured friend of would stoop to such middle school behavior, but say la vie, I guess. Okay, so let's move on to another weird storyline that we've touched on previously, the jazz tickets Vita thing. So as mentioned, Meredith is wanting to retaliate against Lisa and dangles a bit of bait in front of Whitney, who takes it and runs with it, having heard a story from one Angie Harrington. After Whitney starts to bond with Lisa, she decides to tell her about it in front of everyone while absolutely wasted. This obviously doesn't go over well with Lisa. I'm an empath. I absorb it all. The pro of this situation is that it kind of evens things out between Lisa and Meredith, but it tears Whitney and Heather apart as Heather claims she doesn't remember hearing these rumors. Okay, so I think this whole situation is just very strange. It does kind of show the dark, seedy underbelly of the Real Housewives where they'll work to dig stuff up on their cast members and kind of brings the audience in a bit, as oftentimes it's fans DMing the housewives with dirt on their castmates. Like I said earlier, I don't really know why Heather would lie about hearing this comment as she is very openly anti-Lisa. I think maybe Angie H was making a joke about Lisa sucking D for jazz tickets and Whitney interpreted it literally. It was kind of a scummy thing to bring up as the intention is to paint Lisa as a cheater and a prostitute, though I guess she said the same thing about Meredith. I think there's a chance that because the rumors were so disparaging that maybe Heather decided not to go forward with trying to make this a thing and that's why Whitney was so adamant that she knew about it but was saying she didn't. I don't know, this whole thing made for a good line for Meredith in the trailer, but seeing it play out was kind of... Uh, in general, I don't like when people are throwing out cheating accusations or things like that, so this storyline was kind of a no for me. But let's move on to the storyline we waited for since the moment the trailer dropped, Heather Gay's Black Eye. We had to wait so long as it didn't happen until the cast trip to San Diego, and when we finally got it, we were left waiting and waiting to find some sort of resolution that still hasn't really come. So after a night of fighting with Whitney dressed as Marilyn Monroe and debaucherous partying with Jen, Heather wakes up with a fright. Not only does she have a black eye, but she also has scratches all over her. We get left with a cliffhanger only to pick up the next episode with Heather calling Jen over to create a cover story. Jen has some suggestions. Like a spider laid eggs in your eyeball. But they ultimately decide to feign ignorance, question mark, and call in Meredith. Meredith seems genuinely shocked and alarmed by Heather's eye, as are all the other ladies when Heather reveals it to them. Oh my god. What the f happened? Oh my god. And what happened? What happened? Oh, but what happened? From there, we get this back and forth over what happened with literally everyone, production included, trying to get Heather to say what happened. She constantly changes her story, or rather implication of a story, and honestly, it's never really clear what actually happened and what she knows because she performs coyness about the whole thing. The most solid implication she seems to be making is that someone else was responsible for her black eye, but she doesn't want to get them in trouble, so she's keeping quiet about the whole thing. If this were true, the most likely suspect seems to be Jen, as there would be more consequences than normal to her physically assaulting someone, as she was away trial at the time. A major theme around this time was how toxic Heather and Jen's friendship was, and if she was really covering for Jen hitting her, it would be further proof. It's just weird because we see footage of Jen, Angie K, and Meredith arriving to party late into the night. We don't see what they're doing, but you'd think that one of them would notice if Jen harmed Heather, or if Heather fell or something. Which leads to other theories, such as it being a drunken accident. It's certainly possible, as it's clear that Heather was partying hard that night, but Heather doesn't give too much time to this theory. Another alternate theory is that it was caused prior to the trip and only showed up in all its glory on this day. Some more science-minded people than me have said that bruises can't form overnight, that it takes a few days, so assuming this is true, a likely candidate seems to be some sort of beauty lab and laser treatment. I can see Heather not wanting to say if this was what it truly was, as it's not good for her business if people are getting massive black eyes after her treatments. We never really see this theory explored on the show, but I saw a lot of people talking about it on social media, so I wanted to throw it out there as a possibility. Heather herself really dangles this idea that someone did this to her, they all know, and she just doesn't want to say. 
The other women besides Jen don't seem to know what she's talking about and unsuccessfully try to probe it out of her. Heather keeps iterating that she wants it to just go away, but as Lisa points out, if she would just say what happened, it wouldn't be this big mystery that they all want to get to the bottom of. Even Andy presses her about it at the reunion, and now her story is that she blacked out and doesn't know what happened but didn't want to admit this due to Mormon shame about drinking, though she's been getting drunk on camera for three seasons at this point, so I don't know. While it's possible this shame is genuine, I'm not sure if I buy it if I'm being honest. She also says she told producers she knew what happened so that the other ladies wouldn't rewrite the story. I don't really get what she means by this. Everyone, Andy included, seemed really annoyed about the whole thing as production had to launch a whole investigation and it put the crew at risk of being implicated in something horrible. This was really just an annoying storyline to me. It was made to be such a big moment only to get absolutely zero payoff. The only thing this storyline made me feel was frustration. It was really weird of Heather to dangle possibly being battered, as Meredith put it, only to not take action if it was as serious as she was implying. It was just weird and confusing and annoying. I heard somewhere that it may be addressed on Ultimate Girls Trip 3, on which Whitney and Heather are both cast members, so we'll see. I think that Heather is much more of a ghost producer type, evidenced by this clip. All you'd have to say to shut all of them up is like, why don't we talk about how Heather really got the black Let's eye? Let's do that. You Let's know what they're going to do? They're going to go, zip, and we're not going to tell them. You know why? Because they don't deserve to know. Because they already do, and they just want us to say it out loud. So maybe she thought that this fun mystery landed in her lap and thought it would be fun to make it a storyline, but when the question is whether she was assaulted by someone, it's kind of like not that fun, especially when you have a cast member who has flirted with getting physical with many cast members, even on that very trip, and you seem like you're protecting them. To make matters worse, Heather seemed to still think the whole thing was funny, joking that the answer may be in her upcoming book, only for people with an advanced copy to tell us on Reddit that it's not. It was just tacky and reckless, but I think she finally gets it, as it seemed to have hit her by the reunion. I like the idea of a mystery and theory, but this never even got solved. After the reunion, I don't even know what my theory on what actually caused a black eye is. Like, I really don't know. But let me know what your theory is. Okay, so let's look at how Mormonism played into this season. This is one of my favorite aspects of Salt Lake, and I like seeing how it plays into the series. It was a little less in the spotlight for season 3, but we still got some content. Whitney started things off by wanting to formally expunge her name from the LDS records. She finds out all it takes is going to quitmormon.com and signing up, though she does find out later that she needs to redo the process with a notary as witness. Heather is pretty apprehensive about this whole thing, which I found interesting. I think even though Whitney is outspoken about her perceptions of the trauma the church bestowed upon her, Heather's bad Mormon journey has always interested me a little more because she always seems like she hasn't fully committed to outer darkness the way Whitney has. Heather still has a bit of that judgy side, which directly contradicts with the cool, easy breezy persona she prefers to present. She opens up about the shame she's brought on her family for being so outspokenly anti-Mormon and struggles a lot this season as she writes her book. I feel for her in this. I think there's a part of her that still wants to embody that good girl image of a perfect Mormon wife and mother that she expected would be hers when she was a child. And maybe there's a part of her that resents the fact that that's just not who she is. I think we all love that version of Heather that says fight the power, down with Mormon oppression, and part of her wants to totally step into that version of herself, but there's still a part of her that just wants to embody the expectations that were placed on her. It's gotta be really difficult to reject what was expected of you, so I understand a little messiness as she sheds her old skin. Her book is about to be released right as season 4 starts filming, so it'll be interesting to see her navigate the anxiety of everything officially being out there and see if she's able to find some catharsis and begin to leave her old self behind a bit more. Oh, and Heather created a choir that led to a hilarious moment of arguing between Lisa and Heather while everyone else was doing vocal exercises. While we're here, let's discuss the quality of the trips the ladies took. So in this modern era of housewives, the cast will typically go on a smaller, more local trip at the beginning of the season and then a bigger, more exciting trip, usually to an international location towards the end of the season, but thanks to one Jennifer Shaw, the ladies are not able to travel outside of the country, so we had two mini-esque trips, one to Scottsdale early on with only our core cast members, and then a trip at the end to San Diego where Angie K and Dana were brought along. Angie H was unfortunately left out of this one. Obviously, both of these locations are underwhelming. We've never really seen the Salt Lake women leave the western United States, so hopefully with the exit of Jen, they'll get to go somewhere cool. As far as drama goes, I mean, it was the Salt Lake City cast getting drunk and confined find spaces, so it delivered in spades. Add in the fact that each cast member had someone they hated, so it was just chaos on these trips. To make things better, they made every dinner in San Diego themed, so we got Heather and Whitney arguing in random Marilyn Monroe outfits. Like, I get the Tongan and Greek themed dinners as Jen and Angie K wanted to honor their heritage, but like, the Marilyn Monroe thing was just so random because there was no Marilyn Monroe-esque activities to go along with it. They were just wearing wigs and fighting. Okay. But still, the trips felt a little low budget, and now that they're on their fourth season, 
and there are no flight risks in the group, I think they deserve to go somewhere fabulous. Let's check back in a year and hope that they didn't go to, like, I don't know, the ranch the Roni ladies went to in season 6. Okay, that about covers the major storylines of this season. Now let's talk about each lady individually. I'll skim past some of the stuff I've already covered. Let's start with Whitney Wild Rose. Oh boy, this was surely Whitney's season in my eyes. She'd always been a bit more of a side character, messily stirring the pot, while the true pillars of the show in the first two seasons were always Heather, Lisa, and Jen. But this season, Whitney said enough. I'm taking the spotlight. One of her central themes this season was her healing journey. She'd always been a bit spiritual and had never really been shy to let us into her life, but this season she opened up to us viewers as well as the other housewives, including Heather, about the abuse she suffered as a child. This is really heavy and I wish her nothing but healing and perhaps finding growth and meaning from such an awful foundational experience. We saw her reconnect with her half-siblings as she learned to navigate these revelations. I think it was really brave of her to open up about her childhood and let us a bit into the process of what it's like to come to terms with something so horrific. She also showed a bit of growth, realizing that living in this traumatic space had made her stir the pot for attention in the past, and realized that a lot of her issues with Lisa were more projections of the image she'd built up of her. We saw her standing up for herself and put up boundaries where she hadn't before, even if it meant that some relationships had to change. I've always liked Whitney, but I enjoyed her much more this season. I did feel like she kind of made her husband losing his job all about her, but I don't know, let's just move on. To Heather! Oh man, it's kind of crazy what happened to Heather this season. Actually, I'll talk about her early years in my next video, but it's crazy to think that just like a year ago, she was the voice of the people, absolutely beloved, the narrator and protagonist, the only normal person in a sea of lunatics, and now she's absolutely detested. I've already touched on a lot of it, but she made a lot of mistakes this year. The black guy was just weird. She dingled and dangled this story of possible violence and then cried Mormon shame when it didn't go over well with anybody. She came off cruel and heartless in her friendship breakup with Whitney and was weirdly loyal to Jen, despite the fact that she's going to prison for defrauding the elderly. I think a lot of viewers felt kind of betrayed and started to question if that level-headed funny woman we got to know in season one was all a ruse. I don't think so, but she was definitely off this season. I think, first off, the show and fan favorite status may have gotten to her head a bit. A woman literally cried at BravoCon saying how much Heather meant to her and all of us, so she was well aware of how much audience favor she had, but I think maybe she miscalculated how much we would put up with, as well as didn't factor in that Lisa had started to reach similar heights of audience love, so we had another option. I do think it's important to consider that Heather was really going through a lot emotionally, especially with the writing of her book. She talks about how much it's been stressing her out, knowing that it's going to fully destroy any chance of going back to her Mormon roots and will really upset her family, who she's already betrayed by going on the show and being so critical of the church. As mentioned in my Whitney vs. Heather section, I don't think Heather really knows how to handle these emotions and will bury them or mask them in humor, and that just doesn't always work. I think with the black eyes, she really misjudged what seemed to be a fun TV moment and make it a whole thing for the mystery and the humor of it all, but we care about Heather and don't want to see her harmed, and she was being so dodgy about this, especially when she claimed that she didn't want anyone talking about it but made it such a mystery that you couldn't help but talk about. I think she just kind of lost the plot this season, but seemed to be kind of understanding where she went wrong by the time the reunion came around, so hopefully we'll see a better version of her next season. Okay, so let's go to friend town and talk about our first Angie, Miss Angie H. Now, she's incredibly polarizing. She's kind of a so bad it's good type where she's grating and annoying and thirsty till all of a sudden it clicks that she's actually super entertaining and not like serious. At least that happened to me. We first saw her in season two where she came in as Lisa's friend of 20 years only to declare herself cousins with Whitney and team up with her to expose Lisa as a caterer canceller, which is kind of wild. So we shouldn't be surprised when she came in this season denying any involvement in the weird Instagram account her husband runs despite clearly being involved. She does a coordinated dance in a top hat with Whitney before she starts to get the ick with her upon hearing about the Finsta drama, leaving her only with Heather really as an ally. And Heather is ride or die for Angie H. This is oddly a sticking point for her and one of the few times we actually see her stand up to Jen this season. Angie H is kind of Heather's confidant and encourages her to seek help for the black eye. So look, I get it. Does this woman seem to only want screen time? Yes, but she's kind of hilarious so I say give it to her. Keep her around as a Kim D-esque figure never fully joining in on the fun, but stepping in here or there to incite mayhem on occasion. But let's keep this Angie train going and talk about Angie K. She was definitely the most involved friend. I think maybe she was filming as full-time because we get this solo scene of her in a flashback, and only full-time girls get solo footage, except in rare instances that I don't think Angie K would have deserved, so I don't know 
what was going on there. I feel like I got glimmers of liking Angie K, but I never fully bought in. She had the big moment of being humiliated by Jen mere moments into their big San Diego trip, currying favor with almost everyone, but turned around and humiliated Jen ten times worse and got her shoes thrown overboard by Jen. It was good to have her around for the last moments of Jen, as she has a long history with her, so we got a little more insight into these weird push and pull relationships that Jen has with seemingly everyone around her, but I don't know if I'm like super eager to continue on with Angie K. Let's spice things up a bit and talk about Lisa Barlow. She's just such great television. I just love the way she says things. No, I don't pop pills, bitch. You do. You just might hear a little more about her soon, but this season she had another good year. Personally, she was on a journey trying to get her son to want to go to college. Fudge college, honestly. Normally this is the storyline of my nightmares, subtweet Kyle Richards, but I found this one a bit more interesting as Jack is facing what I imagine other Gen Zers are facing with finding success early on and not really seeing a point in getting a degree when they're already making money. The world has changed a lot in recent years and I think a lot of kids are throwing their dreams into things like content creation or entrepreneurship. I can see the idea of college seeming pointless to some teens nowadays, but hopefully he goes because college is super fun. Aside from that, Lisa was in constant chaos, as per usual, coming into this season with her tail between her legs after her childish tantrum, as Meredith put it, so she finally befriends Whitney. Hallelujah. She wasn't as obviously meddling as she was in season 2, being more on the brunt of it as Meredith and co dig into her finances and possible business dealings. She does make some odd decisions, like posting Heather's dad's obituary to prove Heather was lying at the season 2 reunion. I'm still unclear on why she did this then. Because this happened in episode 6, so the reunion wouldn't have just aired then. I don't know, maybe I missed it. If so, correct me in the comments. It was strange. She also accused Meredith of being on drugs to retaliate for Meredith talking about her business. So yeah, maybe not quite as much of a tour de force performance as season 2, but she had way less episodes to work with. I can't wait to see what she does next year. So let's do a quick scan of Dana. I think we were all excited for her when she had that incredible scene in the trailer that was ultimately cut. Don't get my mother if I were you, I'd be real nice right now, especially if you want some money on your books. <gasps> but in practice, Dana was just not a fit in my opinion. I don't think it's really her fault, she just didn't have chemistry with the other cast members. Her attempts at small talk were awkward. What kind of eggs are they? I don't know. Cage free, range free, whatever was in the refrigerator. And we really only saw her drop some sort of bomb and they didn't really land because she didn't have the social clout within the group for them to land properly. I think all of us viewers appreciated her actually acknowledging the legal elephant in the room and questioning Jen and the women's support of her, and we do get this interesting explanation from Whitney that it's just what they have to do to stay afloat around Jen. I think if she had any sort of ally at all, maybe she could have been something, but I don't see her coming back. So on to Meredith. She too had a bad season. After taking attacks all last year, she's decided to go back to disengaging and try her hand at a more Vanderpumpian style of housewife gameplay and tried to play a little 3D chess, but she just didn't have the touch and she was sussed out immediately. She also randomly became Team Jen, and despite giving us a glimmer of hope that when she pled guilty, we'd see some sort of reaction or anger towards Jen, but even Andy can't get anything really out of her on the subject. She's facing 10 plus years in jail. That right. doesn't make you have any reaction? You're like a uh, monotone about this? No, I wouldn't say I'm monotone. You have no feeling about this whatsoever. I it just doesn't make sense that she'd been so anti-Jen. Does her hatred of Lisa really transcend any sense of moral compass she has? I think it must be fear-based. I want to hope that she'll talk about it a bit more next season, but I don't know. Otherwise, this was a pretty tame season for Meredith. She talked about her nephew's mental health struggles and hosted a fashion show fundraiser, which of course is a good thing. We got a bathtub scene with Seth that nobody asked for. Please, Real Housewives stop doing this. But yeah, I don't know. Am I missing anything? I always like Meredith's cadence. Yes, 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 yes. And she too says things in a way I just can't get enough of. I'm not mad. Like, these are irritations, so I'm just gonna voice them and yes. we can move on. But hopefully she'll be back to engaging a little bit more next season. And finally, for the last time, let's talk about Jen. I think at this point, she's worn out her welcome. She brings the chaos and the drama, but she's totally frustrated me. Aside from the legal issues, which speak for themselves, she's not able to meaningfully engage in conflict and just yells and cries and manipulates the situation to make herself a victim, and it's just not fun to watch. I feel like she's holding the women emotionally hostage as she freaks out on them if they offer for even the slightest hint of constructive criticism, so they're forced to just take these massive blows yet give her utter loyalty. It's just bad vibes. I can see those glimmers of charm in her from time to time, and she gives funny confessionals, but I'm ready to get off Jen's wild ride. She's a complex person, and maybe once the dust is settled, I'll revisit her time on the show, but for now, I'm just glad she's gone. Okay, so something I want to touch on is some production weirdness that was happening with this season because a lot of things felt a bit off. I think there was a lot of scrambling going on behind the scenes that made this season feel a little weird. 
First, I think they felt pressure to start filming immediately after season 2 ended. If you remember, it was like a week after the reunion finished airing that cameras were back rolling. I think one reason was of course they wanted to feature Jen's trial, which was supposed to begin in March of 2022. Her trial of course ended up being pushed back to July, only to not go forward when she changed her plea last minute, but I think this really screwed up the timeline of this season. I can understand them wanting to capture Jen's trial on camera, as it would have been disappointing had there actually been a trial and it wasn't covered, and I guess they couldn't predict that it would be pushed back, which left them having to change the general thread of this season. It also screwed up the finale, having to put the finale cards in the middle of the episode to show Jen, Heather, and Meredith in New York rushing through Jen pleading guilty. The ending scene was kind of jarring, with a sit-down between Lisa and Heather discussing the case, and the scene just kind of ends. It's a lot. It's a lot. I don't know, it just didn't feel like there was closure, but it did create some dramatic tension. Aside from that, there was a lot of stuff missing. Remember Jenny Wynn from season 2 that had a file of racist Facebook posts come out after the reunion taped? I remember it was a big to-do that the cast wasn't speaking on it for a while, and it was apparently because they filmed a sit-down confrontation with her that we never ended up seeing. I can see them wanting to totally sweep this away, and I think most people would rather just not give her any more attention. But it had to have been taking an emotional toll on the women early on in the season, and that was never really explained. And remember the storyline that Mary M. Cosby was running a cult? Well, video leaked of Jen and Heather at her church at the beginning of filming season 3, and nothing ever came of that. Beyond that, there was this weird party where the women are dressed in very creative ways. We never saw this either. Plus, there's the Angie Solo footage. But I can see all of that being kind of inconsequential to the main storyline for this season. I'm sure there's always a lot filmed, not shown, so it's not necessarily a big deal. But one thing that was a big deal was this hot tub conversation with Whitney, Angie K, Lisa, and Jen, where they all talked mad shit about Heather, including Jen, and where Whitney declared she was on a friendship break from Heather. We get flashbacks to this scene, but if it's so important, why didn't we get to see it fully? And this is not even included including Dana's confrontation with Jen that we never saw except for in the trailer and at a flashback at the reunion. I have a theory, and maybe it's silly, but I think they really want to film Salt Lake City in the winter to get the snowy vibes, so they had to ensure the season finished airing soon enough for them to get cameras up and running before the snow melted. If this is the case, I feel like I get it for the first few seasons, but at this point we understand Salt Lake City is winter vibes, but we're past the need to differentiate this franchise from the others, so we can probably drop it going forward. I promise nobody is watching this show to see people go snow tubing. I also think these quick turnarounds force casting to make quick decisions, and we haven't really gotten any great new blood on the show since it premiered. It also ups the toxicity when people are still fired up from the previous season, and it may be best to give them a little break to cool off. I don't know, just a thought. I love Salt Lake City and don't want to wait a long time to watch season 4, but if it means that the season will be better and they'll have the time to find better newbies, then I can hold my horses a little, you know? So going forward, I obviously think we'll get our core four back in Meredith, Lisa, Whitney, and Heather. It would be kind of detrimental if any of them didn't return. Page 6 has said that Mary M. Cosby is coming back as a friend of. This hasn't been officially confirmed by Bravo if it's true, at least as I'm saying this, but I think it makes sense to bring her back. I know she's super divisive, but I personally find her to be the most interesting housewife of all time, and she adds a quirkiness that makes the show a little more fun. There wasn't closure with her story after season 2, so I'm definitely interested to see her pop back up. Other than that, obviously Jenny won't return. Of the current friends, I don't think any of them are a shoo-in, but I wouldn't rule them out, especially if they aren't finding any newbies and want to get back rolling as quickly as the rumors say they will be. So overall, I think this season got more hate than it deserved. Nothing was going to live up to season 2, and we got a lot of changing dynamics. I do think it was pretty toxic, and not all the storylines were that fun to watch. It also saw the downfall of a lot of people's faves, so I can see that not being the most fun thing in the world to watch. Like I said earlier, it's better as a binge, and I think you've got to pay pretty close attention to get the full effect, and I mean, it's reality TV. You don't always want to do that. So those are my thoughts on season 3 of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. I'd love to hear other people's thoughts on this season, so feel free to give me a write-up below. And thanks so much for all the support on my channel. I just had a video hit 100,000 views, which is so exciting. I really love making these videos, so thanks so much for watching. If you ever want to chat on social media, I have Twitter, Instagram, and a brand new TikTok, which I don't really know how to use yet, but that didn't stop me with YouTube, so follow me there for possibly more content. Okay, well, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!